right to the rocks. Then I make that shit back. Run up on me, get shot in the back. It's Jerry TV, the Booty Field VS Scott Shadow Man. Back another dad of reactions. Today we have another Rene Boxer Enriquez Mexican Mafia interview. Not yes. another, but we're covering him again. This is like the third time we basically covered him. Yeah, and this guy right here is extremely controversial. Yeah. Um, some say we're a leader of this specific group. Yep. Uh, some would say snitch. Some would say uh, just someone that learned how to navigate the system mm. with the cards that were dealt to him. So this is the only channel where you can actually speak to us and we speak back to you. So DM us on Instagram on Pops React. This is JTV. JTV. You can send them messages. We'll link back and forth. We have a Discord on the link below. If it's your first time tuning in, subscribe. Request. And then we react. So, I think we should get right to it, right? Yeah, we're not going to talk anymore because this yeah. is a long ass video. We're, no more talking. You have to have some specific quality. You have to have uh, this magnetism that, that attracts these other alpha males, these these killers. These. That's these what he sounds like? Up. I thought he was going to be like, yeah, this is extremely well spoken. What's up, moms? I'm sure he got that, but I know he know how to turn it off. What do yeah. we call that? Uh, code switching. You have to code switch in life. So if you're in your life, I'm give you a tip of the day. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna add some value to your life. I learned this when I was little, though. I'm not gonna lie. You have to learn how to turn it on and off. You have to be a professional sometimes when you speak, and you have to sound clear, concise. You got to sound confident in your words, and then you could be hood sometimes. And, yo, what's <laughs> up, yo? What you doing? But you got to learn how to turn it on and off. You no, can't be sure. both 100 percent of the time. Yeah, that just shows you have low IQ if you just. Have one, yeah, or you have untrained IQ. I would say. Tism mm. that that attracts these other alpha males, these these killers, these these creme de la creme of California criminal society. You have to attract them. Boss. If you have that magnetism, boss, boss. you have this leadership quality. You have yeah. the. Oh, as he said, you got creme of creme of the creme of the California prison system. It's true. Wow. You're not lying. Criminal society. You have to attract them. If you have that magnetism, you have this leadership quality. You have the intellect. You have the heart. Uh, if you're willing to kill, uh, wow. uh, somebody will sponsor you. Progress in the organization uh, by doing work. You do work, and, and work is, is basically stabbing people. Uh, you kill people in the organization, uh, and that's how you escalate. That's how you, uh, that's how you advance. That's our status mobility system. Mm. In society, you have, wow. uh, you have college, you have your job, you have uh, like civil watch. service. Yeah, right. uh, and that's your status mobility system. I mean, you're edu you educated, you make more money, you move up in, 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 your, in your position in society. In our society, the more people we kill, we advance. The more things we do for the Mexican Mafia, we advance. We gain uh, our social status. We become... Uh, so it's a way of like, control the prisons, but you're going to be in jail forever anyway, so you might as well do some crime, do more crime. Yeah, and I, I was still like processing them fighting on the yard <laughs> and all the bombs and all the stuff, the spray to break them up. And old boy jumped back in, like the bomb blew up, he popped out. He jumped back in, was beating a guy up, they threw something else, he moved back, and then he jumped. Just adrenaline he, rush. He just know he's going to go in a hole anyway, so yeah. he's making the best of it. Wow, that's crazy to think about it, too. Yeah. Recognized in the organization. Now, you first have to capture the uh, attention of... Uh, a specific Mexican mafia member. So then you'll, you'll be asked to do favors. I mean, this is a, a, a an organization with audacity, uh, with individuals in it uh, willing to kill, uh, wow. hoping to uh, to shock the public, because this 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 shock and awe value uh, of their crimes uh, generates uh, great publicity for them. Well, I mean, you have to understand that these are domestic. Well, you have to understand that in jail, I believe the prisoners they when they get, when they like off each other like they're trying to kill each other and they fight they get less time so like a prisoner doesn't have the same value in court yeah. as a citizen like so that's why it almost goes unpunished or smack on the wrist that's why this behavior kind of continues you know yeah or doesn't get sold well, i could be wrong if i'm wrong you guys could correct me but that's what i remember hearing domestic terrorists and they they prey on this uh constant fear that they evoke uh, by the name Emmett, Mexican Mafia. We heard that when we were young. It was like, wow, these guys are heavies, and they are heavies. Ah, that may be accurate for the, the immediate uh, period. I mean, following his arrest, uh, you remove him from uh, that specific neighborhood. But you have to understand that uh, that's when it starts. That's when the individual is going to become a Sudeño or a Norteño. He's going to be placed into his community. Uh, he's going to be placed into a community within prison. That, that fosters antisocial behavior. I mean, that thrives on criminal behavior. 
uh, and the organization that controls uh, this individual, be it the uh, Nuestra Familia, BGF, AB, or M, is going to utilize this yeah. individual to infiltrate his neighborhood. Bad Gorilla family. Oh, wow. That's a whole set in jail, too. But by who? Who's that? Mostly the African American um, inmates. The, oh. The BGF, Bad Gorilla family. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All over again. Uh, this individual says he's from Bell Gardens, uh, say he's from Montebello. Uh, a Mexican mafia member will contact him and say, who are the connections in your, in your neighborhood? Can you contact them for me? And tell them that you're my representative here and that you want to uh, establish a uh, conduit between me and them. And they'll be utilized that way. And we'll, we'll re-infiltrate that, that uh, community and have it even a stronger hold than when you took the youngster out. So all you're doing is you're immersing that kid into a world where uh, there's no regression. I mean, he can't go back. Uh, once he's involved with the Mexican Mafia, it's uh, in for penny, in for a pound. Yeah, know? right. They like break uh, them out. In for a pound. I feel like I was mentioning that earlier. Like you go to prison and like you're made to not come home to like level up, or like yeah. you probably already did the crime anyway. You probably got life for like forty years. There's people who do go to jail, let's say, and get like a five year sentence, and then they end up getting in a situation where they end up getting more time. Either they're self defense, or maybe they just do something inappropriate. So it's kind of tough, man. And yeah. once you get in that circle, and this guy talks like he's a, like. Uh, <laughs> A news reporter, yeah, news reporter, slash psychiatrist. He's yeah. like breaking it down. Man. Yeah, facts. Guy's smart as hell. Yeah. Uh, you can't get in and say I don't want to play no more unless you drop out like I did. After twenty years of my life, I dropped out. Uh, we use a method of uh, of communication which I like to call carnival talk. Uh, it sounds innocuous to you and I, innocuous. but it's nefarious. Its underlying intent is nefarious. Say that I had a visitor and I told the visitor, uh, "Hey, how's uh?" I bet you they don't know what, what those words meant. Yeah, he, he's going to read a lot. He, Nocius. he learned that in prison, for sure. Yeah, that dictionary he read a lot. He read a lot. Yeah, he read a lot. He probably read the dictionary front and back. Word, he might as well. Uh. Joe doing? Uh, Joe's doing fine. Yeah? Why don't you ask uh, uh, Berta to go over there and see him and uh, make sure she talks to him for me. Uh, give him my very best. Okay, to you, it sounds like uh, Berta's going to go over there and give him regards. But to me, I've just authorized a hit against this individual. Yeah. Uh, and in any court of law, it can't be proven because it sounds so generic. It just sounds generic. I mean, we can talk about money, we can talk about uh, crimes, we can talk about uh, drug collections, extortions, uh, taking cars, pink slips, whatever we want. And uh, we do this all day long. We understand that we're being recorded and we alter our conversation a bit uh, to sound innocuous. And, uh, we have the institutional gang investigators just scratching their heads sometimes. And what does this mean? And what does this mean? Any Me Me Mexican mafia member can authorize a, a hit on anybody. As long as it's not a relative of another Mexican mafia member or a worker of a Mexican mafia oh, wow. member. Uh, but now it's, it's, it's become like a phenomenon of control. Uh, there are lists that are four or five pages long and they're authorized hard candy, hard check, personal check, you know. And this is uh, ridiculous to the to the hardcore members of the Mexican Mafia because we believe that an assault, once authorized, should be murder. I mean, it, the enemy should simple. be killed because you don't go in to create an enemy. Wow, good point, Mustache. L listen, he's telling it all, and he's Ratatouille of the century, I would say. He's, he's telling it all. like Yeah, he's not even a penny out. <laughs> and it's crazy because he... He really said some smart stuff because he was like, listen, uh, we're not here to make enemies. We're here to eliminate the individual. You know That's crazy. That's like some genocide shit. You guys think I should get a mustache like that? You don't go to assault somebody because it destroys them. I mean, it, their whole resume as a uh, up-and-coming uh, sureño or camarada is, is marred oh, once they're assaulted. Oh. So you want to go to whack somebody. I mean, you want to make sure he's killed. So and they use multiple multiple assailants they use uh, backup shooters they use bunk cars i mean they're strategic strategically done i mean some of them are just done where they stick the gun out the window and boom they do it you know but some of them they're well put together they're well put together a conservative estimate there's 150,000 to 175,000 individuals that know the name mexican mafia they fear it and they will do things for it uh hardcore individuals say maybe 50,000 Soldados, which are soldiers. Uh, but the group is small. The Mexican mafia is small in itself. I mean, it has vast influence. Vast influence. And that's in California. We're not considering the Arizona. We're not considering the Hawaii faction. We're not considering the federal faction. Wait, Hawaii? Uh, Why? Because there's prisons in Hawaii, I'm guessing? 
Yeah, there's places everywhere, fool. I know, but they get placed in Hawaii, or there's people who just live in Hawaii that end up becoming gangbangers? Or? Yeah, there's probably a place to expand. Yo, or maybe one of them went on vacation and got locked, locked up, and then <laughs> he's just created a set out there. Not a word. That's true. This is this is an organization that's truly organized crime. Uh, in our neighborhoods, we're like, how would we equate it? Like senators, we represent those areas. We go to the neighborhood and we treat it like, uh, like demigods. You know, this is a big homie, you know? What do you want, you know? Girls, drugs, money, cars, you got it, you know? We make it uh, profitable for our position. Uh, all these murders that are committed for nothing over the past years, we have hundreds of bodies stacked up, literally hundreds of victims that have been killed by the Mexican Mafia. We this guy really makes it sound like it's an official corporation. And just remember, but all the deaths and destruction and people getting killed, the people who lose their dad or their kid or like, it's a lot of violence. And he's just like really being very like, what's the word? Like very like mm -hmm. pra pragmatic. Like it doesn't really like. He's not sympathetic, right? Right. He's like, There's um, no empathy. He's just letting, putting the information out. But I, what I, it's not really more what he's saying is how you, the public, interpret it. Just remember that. There's a lot of pain behind these words. Man. Yeah, for sure. That's what I meant to say. We have hundreds of bodies stacked up, literally hundreds of victims that have been killed by the Mexican Mafia. We, we parlay that, those past victims, even though they didn't pay then, they pay now. They pay now. People pay us for those murders now because we translate this terrorism into finances. Well, you have a facilitator. This individual is usually a, vis a visitor who uh, handles all your communication to the crew chief. The crew chief is the individual who is your right-hand man. He handles, he's a representative on the streets. And from there you have crew leaders, uh, individuals who run specific areas for you, parts of your territory. As a member, and then below them there are workers. Those are the guys that are out there actually collecting and selling drugs and doing the extortions for you and enforcing. Wow. As a member, you're, you're, you have an organizational entitlement. Uh, you. As soon as you're made, you inherit a piece of turf. Uh, it's usually the area which you hail from. Say, I'm Boxer from Artesia. Uh, as Boxer from Artesia, I can uh, conduct any illicit activity in Artesia that I wish, without any opposition from the organization. I don't have any kickbacks to give anybody. I don't owe anybody any money. This is all cream for me. I can also conduct business in the outlying areas as long as it doesn't uh, interfere with another member's uh, business objectives. If it does, we strike a uh, we strike an agreement. I'll give you X amount of money. You let me function here, wow, the, or you give Mexican me X amount of money. The program is like really structured. Like yeah. people don't realize how structured it is compared to the black program or let's just say the Aryan program. Yeah. But that's why you don't really hear about like crime globally. Well, well, I don't know. Someone like this is really going intricate with the details. So yeah. Maybe those other factors that you mentioned, like the BGF or the might have parts. They might. The, and I know that they have rules. It's just he makes it sound like nobody's breaking the rules. Yeah. That's what he's making Word. it sound That's like. That's true. Yeah, yeah. You can function here. Uh, everybody pays them up. Everybody pays. To do business, we all pay. It's smart business. Um, but I can function anywhere in the state of California, anywhere I wish, uh, with the full authority of the Mexican Mafia and the full authority of my crew, me being the figurehead of that crew, the ultimate power in that crew, uh, as long as it does not interfere with other members' business. Uh, and if it does, I can easily politic on that member, get him killed, oh and take over his business. And it's that simple. That's how life is in the Mexican Mafia. That's why it's so treacherous. Uh, I used to run quite a large crew, probably one of the most successful crews in Southern California. Uh, and I did it all through visits of mail. Uh, we'd alter their names, we'd alter my name when they wrote back, and we conducted business out of Pelican Bay for about 10 years. And I was clearing maybe uh, 60 a year from the cell of Pelican Bay. And that's not bad for being in prison, a thousand miles away from your base of power. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, we were discussing, we yeah. saw that like two times in the other two documentaries. He's making 60,000 a year. You can't even make that outside. But that's not the point. It's crazy how like, he really thinks it's normal, right? This is his normal life. It is. He, he seems to make it normal and noble too. Yeah. But it is his life. He doesn't know anything else. Yeah. Like he just true. said, after 20 years, he dropped out. Wow. That's crazy. You know He's a robot. That's not bad at all. How much is the crew making? Astronomical amounts. I mean, this this is 
I'm the low end, I'm at the low end of the spectrum being paid. Uh, I understand that I'm the figurehead. They're doing all the work. They own legitimate businesses. Uh, we had two legitimate, three legitimate businesses, uh, and they ran them. But underneath that, they were doing uh, illicit drug trade, extortion. Uh, so if they're driving uh, Mercedes Benzes, Lexuses, uh, Escalades, uh, they're pulling in seven figures easy. I mean, the whole all of the crew is seven figures easy. Uh, they made far greater amounts of money than me. And, and but I was satisfied with what I got. I was happy. Although with blue collar money, I I put my kids to college. I, Supported my family. Yeah. I did well. I think. I know the Mexican wow. mafia has established ties with like what's on those in the federal prison system. Although personally, I never had dealings with them. We had dealings with others, Asians, in Monterey Park, uh, and we know that they had triads. Uh, we had uh, ties with other organized groups in specific areas, methamphetamine cooks. We had ties with uh, the Arreano Felix clan in uh, Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, Bet uh, Marquez had ties. Uh, even some of my crew had ties with some of their lower rung dealers. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I guess the Mexican connect is obviously easy. So, you know, you, you get this, the, the drugs or whatever from Mexico, they bring it up there. But I, I, I was pretty interesting how, like, can you really trust people in a different country? Like, how does that even work? Like, how can you trust yeah, them to make yeah, sure they... Because they could be like, here's 30000 for this amount. And they could just be like, no. And you can't do nothing about it. Right, right, right. It's a gray area because when you do do deals like that, there's no want to enforce the rule like if someone breaks a rule then there's gonna be problems it's a whole different country bro like yeah. yeah so there is a little bit of a gray area of trust like i trust this person till i don't kind of. yeah because i know in america let's say you get signed for somebody out here like you could run down on them or whatever but you gotta run you're not going to mexico and finding somebody like they're gonna yeah yeah they're gonna knock you down <laughs> uh, there are ties i mean anything that makes money is 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 is, is what the mexican mafia is all about anything that increases its political and financial power and if that means dealing with the uh, African community, that's no problem. Uh, all money is green. That's what the Mexican Mafia thinks, it's, uh, that money is, 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 is okay. It does okay to do business with anybody as long as it's profitable. When you have Mexican Mafia members associating with senators, uh, politicians, uh, well-meaning individuals wow. who believe in what they're doing is right, have no understanding of the uh, nefarious intent of the Mexican Mafia, it will, it will stoop to an all-time low to get somebody killed. Uh, and, and that's what these politicians, that, that, that these clergymen, that some of the administrators have to understand. Uh, the Mexican Mafia will kill, and its whole objective is to control. So when you see these peace objectives... Uh, Look, these, it's not uh, hard to kill someone, right? They say that all the time. Like, it's not hard to pull the trigger. But how do you get people to be on that program where, like, all right, because, like, most of America, we're good people, right? Like, most of America doesn't do, do crime, because if that's the case... It would be worse than it is. Yeah, yeah, I think it's ten like percent, ninety percent. Don't. My question to you is, how do they program, or and to you guys too, how do you program someone to like go do that crime? Like what incentive? Like money? Is it what is it? Yeah, like uh, what is the incentive? I think is it money or is it like uh, they're scared because they have to handle their business, and then some people are crazy. Like if you grow up in a the hood, there's always one dude that's like nuts, scary, crazy. Like you're like, oh, hey, you always make sure you're friends with him because he's kind of out there you know the stopping of the drive-bys this is no this is just fluff this is fluff this is the mexican mafia trying to achieve something here and it's doing it because it looks good and it pushes law enforcement off a little bit because uh, law enforcement is going to get bad public relations if they go in there and crack a peace rally you know so they're held back they're held at bay a bit until they understand the true intent of what the mexican mafia is doing it's profiting through the stopping of, uh, of drive-bys is what they're doing, infiltrating neighborhoods, creating representatives in each geographic location in Southern California. This is where the big money pays, and this is where we're becoming true organized crime because we can, can control those gangs. We've displayed it that we can. What law enforcement? Well, I, don't, I, I don't understand. Is I feel like he's like it's almost like playing a game here. He's like, yeah, we get money to make more money, but it's like you're gonna get caught eventually, right? But do they understand that? They like, don't care. Yeah, he's already doing it from jail, so you can't put him in jail. Yeah, not him, but the people outside of jail. You know people what I'm saying? People don't care, man. People yeah. are lawless. Like, I, uh, there's people that go to jail, do 10 years, and come out and do another crime. Or just keep selling drugs up there. Yeah, yeah, because that's all they know. They don't care. They don't care about jail. People don't care. Yeah, bro. especially when you have a family in there that's going to, you're going to mm -hmm. be with. Like, when you go there, you have people. Because, like, it's not like civs. Like, civilians, you don't have nobody when you go. You don't have crips that you cool with outside. That's what they call civilians now, civs? Yeah, civs. Yeah, yeah. Nah, when you're a civilian, like, you and I, we're like, we're going to work, minding our business. This is entertaining to us, but these dudes are, like, real gangsters and shit. Yeah. 
organizations. Uh, all the resources the federal government can't do, we can do. We can control gangs. And as quickly as we can say, don't start, don't, don't do drive, but we can stay, start shooting at cops. That's what the Mexican mafia, the power of the Mexican mafia is vast. Some of the Eastern philosophies, some of the warrior philosophies, Sun Tzu's Art of War, Sun Essays Su on the Ten Arts of War, uh, Carlos Castillo. That's a good one. Sun Tzu, The Art of War? Yeah. yeah it's a very, uh, it's a book with, uh, it, it's like trances your mind, it puts your mind in a state of like, Mathematically breaking stuff down in your brain, philosophical state. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of words repeating themselves. Oh wow! But rewind a little because I want to hear the second book because I never heard of the second book. They start shooting at cops. That's what the Mexican mob. The power of the Mexican mob is vast. Some of the Eastern philosophies, some of the warrior philosophies, Sun Tzu's Art of War, essays on the Ten Arts of War, uh, Carlos Castaneda. Uh, I think you have just a variety of different literature that, that the Mexican Mafia latches on to. I mean, it's considered uh, uh, Prince, uh, the Prince by Machiavelli, uh, political tactics. I mean, we study all these things. I mean, for anybody to think that some of these Mexican Mafia members are illiterate, and there are some that are illiterate, don't, 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 don't uh, misconstrue that to think that every Mexican Mafia member is a walking genius or anything. Like because, me. <laughs> you know, some of them like are just, me. just rocks. <laughs> uh, but some of the guys sit back. I mean, we're sitting here doing life. And we have nothing better to do than educate ourselves. So we take college courses. I mean, we read yeah. all this classical literature, this Eastern philosophy, and uh, it's absorbed. I mean, we utilize this. We put this to work. In terms of the training, I mean, we all go through uh, basic uh, education as to where to hit people. I mean, where vital organs are, the manner in which we hit them, called shifting gears or over the shoulder uh, stabbing motions, which are, are best to sink the knife the deepest. Uh, Yo, he's making uh, it seem like there's like training classes where they like go through like a combat program, the Mexican he's mafia. He's saying there is, he ain't seen it. Do they all link up like in a garage or a park and they just like yeah, practice probably. with fake knives? Or? I'm sure that, yo, this guy is amazing because he's making it sound almost like- Normal. More than normal. Yeah. It's like I'm reading a fictional book. Yeah, right? But this is reality, y'all. This is real life for people. Two areas basically concentrated on. That's the chest area, the mid torso, uh, yeah. and the white lower qu quadrant of uh, the abdominal area under the ribs, which is liver shot. I mean, this is massive hemorrhage either way, and, and, and that's where we try to hit people when we stab them. Uh, in terms of weapon manufacturing and uh, education and assaults, uh, we saw and this that. is this is. This is almost Disneyland stuff because it's it's we learn this is Sudanios we come up and this is we know how to make bombs, zip guns, uh, explosives, uh, crossbows, knives, uh, everything. I mean, we're well schooled and uh, well healed. Uh, you put me in any room anywhere, I'll come out with a weapon, no matter what. I'll come out with something usable. Yeah, I think that would be considered. Uh, you know, you're throwing, uh, you're shooting daggers at somebody, which is a phrase for you know uh, staring at them harshly. I think that would be a challenge. That's an immediate wow. challenge. I mean, the individual is going to stop and stare back. I mean, that's that's your issue in the, the response. You know, you're looking at me, I look at you, uh, and it's there, somebody's going to wait for the shooting drop. Mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely uh, you're going to you're going to create a Crazy. a situation there with somebody. for the seasoned veteran, uh, the savvy individual. Uh, he'd approach it respectfully, uh, professionally, in control, always protecting himself. But respectfully. I mean, he wouldn't step on their necks. He wouldn't kick them, beat them, uh, sp uh, speak to them in a derogatory manner, you know. But but he would control the situation. Well, the point. And then once he had it in control, he he's really talking like approaching an intellectual approach, control. You know what I'm saying? Always protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? And always stay out of harm's way. But intellectually, you try to de-escalate stuff. Yep. It's pretty cool. He he speak to them like individuals. I mean, I've spoken with gang cops in the streets before. OSS. Uh, individuals like that crash and uh, once we were done proning out uh, once they were sure that they had the situation secured and nobody had any weapons then they put their guns away and they talked to us hey how you doing where you been uh, how long were you down uh, they, they, they try to gain knowledge from you they try to gain intelligence but they did it in a respectful manner that didn't come off as like they were trying to uh, bleed you for information one of the policies of the Mexican mafia has always been uh, never to assault uh, law enforcement it was, it was, it was counterproductive it was always kind of productive. Yeah, like you're, you're not gonna win. Like if you try to assault a police officer, you're done. And it's it's they're the biggest yeah. gang, bro. You're I not... mean, if you're smart enough, listen. I don't know if what he's saying is true, and if it is, it's freaking genius. Cause think about it, right? You do anything to a CEO or or a police officer, they're coming for that ass. Yeah. 
they, like it's it's like I always said that in the hood, like when I grew up in the hood, it'll be this faction and this faction doing whatever they do, if you know what I mean. But they will always beef, and then somebody would fight, shoot, get stabbed. Then it brings the police. Then nobody make money. <laughs> Instead so, of them figuring out how to approach it intellectually, de-escalate and make paper paper. Yeah, <laughs> paper paper. Law <laughs> enforcement. It was it was it was counterproductive. It was always counterproductive. But there's been a swing uh, in mentality. I mean, we have younger members coming up with uh, are more violent, more willing to hurt officers. So I mean, it has to be considered that the, the possibility and the, the true existence of a threat to CDC officials exists and law enforcement because it that's reality. I mean, the, the game is changing. Uh, Mexican Mafia is losing some of its uh, intimidation factor with CDC, so they're going to have to resort to taking off handcuffs numerous times uh, to do assaults in custody. Uh, we had the Buenostro hit in the attorney room, which is a pretty big hit. Uh, me and Benny Peters uh, slipped our cuffs, extracted knives from our shoes, and uh, stabbed this guy in front of about 50 cops. Uh, and in Los Angeles County Jail, all they're armed with is a flashlight. Uh, they don't have weapons like PR-24s or... Uh, no, you didn't even think he killed anybody, right? He's so calm, cool, collected, so well-spoken. I don't know if he was well-spoken 20 years before this. Yeah, but you know what? He ain't tricking me, because this dude's a dangerous dude. He ain't tricking me with the intellectual uh, talk. <laughs> I know what you're about. It's OC spray. They don't have these things in the county jail. Uh, this is back in uh, 92, uh, before the county jail was fully immersed in, in the depth of what the Mexican Mafia was capable of. Uh, and then fortunately, they had to stand around and they watched it while it occurred, because they couldn't stop it. Uh, another so, time, uh, they well, stabbed an uh, individual Mexican Mafia member by the name of uh, Henry Carlos in a, in a court tank uh, at CCB. Uh, and the only thing that stopped that was that an officer mentioned having a gun. Uh, and that's what stopped that, that, that hit. I mean, I used to practice uh, in Pelican Bay, making cuff keys. You can do it with a bobby pin. Uh, it's, it's not that difficult to open cuffs. I mean, uh, any type of cuff that's designed, uh, we all we have is time. But there's no system to like make sure, to make a key so specific that they can't mess with it or is it I not? think now they probably have like key swab like electronic mm -hmm. keys card yeah because he said he's doing it with paper clips yeah you know what I'm saying? that's you crazy like, you know the key and I keep yeah handcuffed are pretty much standard across the board he said like, sit back and that. figure out how to open it. <laughs> any type of device that you create uh, other than black boxes oh, wow. black boxes are very efficient uh, everybody's familiar with the black box mm -hmm. uh, they are very efficient uh, and that's why everybody hates them in the CDC. They're uncomfortable and they can't be taken off. But if it's regular cuffs, people can take off their cuffs. People do have knives. I had a knife on me for five years straight. In shoe, Pelican Bay. I had a key on me for five years straight. A real key. A real knife. Uh, just, uh, this is the reality in prison. This is what the CDC officers and custodial officers have to understand. Individuals are armed, seriously armed. Uh, and they're willing to commit violence. Yo, this is wild how he had a knife. That means he definitely had to put it in his mouth or some pause or somewhere else. Because how do you have a knife? They check you For probably every straight. couple days, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to bend over and shit. It's just crazy. Nah, life is different. It's Sherry TV. Thanks Jerry. for tuning in, man. Subscribe. We, we out of here. Peace. And I know how it gets, so I got still on I'm on my knock. I don't trust no nigga, I don't trust no man, ain't no friends, everybody get shot. You never know, how nigga gon' throw, I'm hitting the floor with a couple of shots. You better move, you better duck either way to go, you get got.